think about this. A shiny material made from an unlikely source, insects. Referred to as shellac, insects produce this natural secretion. After being processed, it is utilized in a variety of products. Shellac serves many uses, such as giving jelly beans a shiny appearance and keeping citrus fruits fresh. Its usefulness also applies to woodworking, where it is highly regarded for its ability to finish surfaces. It is fascinating that shellac's history can be traced back to approximately 3,000 years ago in India, where it was first used to create jewelry and decorate palaces. Currently, India holds the title of being the top shellac producer in the world with yearly revenue surpassing $65 million. How exactly does a product obtained from small insects end up in common products? Come with us on an adventure to India to discover this fascinating process. How Lac Bugs Are Harvested Meet the Caria Laca insect, a tiny critter that's barely visible to the naked eye. In June, farmers carefully place either the brood lac or the mama insect onto fresh tree branches. As these insects hatch and start feeding on tree sap, the females produce a sticky amber-colored raisin. When this resin is exposed to air, it hardens into a protective shell, which we know as shellac. To collect this valuable substance, farmers like to use a special curved knife called a dao lei. They bravely climb up to 20 feet to reach the branches where the insects reside. With around a hundred of these lac-infested trees, it can take up to 300,000 insects to produce just one kilogram of shellac. This is where the name lac insect comes from, derived from the Hindu word ich luk, meaning 100,000. The lac are then sold at a local market for $7 per kilogram. Once the resin has been collected from the lac insects, it undergoes several steps of processing before it's ready for use. After farmers collect the resin, it is brought to processing facilities. Here the resin is cleaned, grated, and dried to remove any impurities and moisture. The cleaned resin is then melted and shaped into various forms, depending on its intended use. Traditional methods involve hand-stretching the resin into thin sheets while modern machinery can press it into uniform shapes more efficiently. Modern Uses of Shellac Shellac has a wide range of applications across various industries. In addition to its use in candies and fruit preservation, shellac is also used in pharmaceuticals as a coating for pills and tablets. Water-resistant properties make it ideal for protecting wood and leather surfaces, and it's often used as a glossy finish for furniture and musical instruments. Artists have used shellac in paints for centuries, and it was even used as the base for early gramophone records. Today, shellac can be found in everyday products like cosmetics, food glazes, and even hairspray. Its versatility and natural origins make it a popular choice for manufacturers seeking sustainable and eco-friendly alternatives to synthetic materials. Cultural Significance Shellac is deeply meaningful in various cultures worldwide, especially in India. In Indian traditions, shellac plays a vital role in religious ceremonies and rituals, where it symbolizes purity and offers protection. Moreover, it's a key element in traditional crafts like lacquerware and bangles, highlighting the skill and creativity of local artisans. In certain areas, shellac also finds its place as a decorative feature in architecture, lending a glossy finish to wooden carvings and furniture, enhancing their beauty and durability. Additionally, in East Asian cultures such as China and Japan, shellac has a rich history in traditional crafts and artistic endeavors. Artisans in these regions have long valued shellac for its versatility and aesthetic appeal, using it in lacquerware, woodwork, and even in the creation of intricate artworks. How the factory makes shellac The process kicks off with crushing and washing, which is the trickiest part. If the lac is cleaned for too long, it might reduce the amount of resin produced. After that, the lac needs to dry to prevent mold and make it easier to extract the resin. During the winter months, the lac is left in a yard for about an hour and a half. In hotter months, it takes half the time, but they have to keep a close eye on it because too much heat can turn it black, which lowers its quality and value. Next, the workers grade the lac into four categories based on its size. They carefully remove any small sticks by hand and use a machine to separate out any remaining stones. 
The lac is then packed into a cloth tube resembling a giant sock and twisted to move it towards the kiln. Inside the kiln, it's spun until the lac melts. Any leftover rocks or sticks are caught by a stalk as the lac melts. Workers spend at least 6 hours a day spinning the tube and tending to the fire, which burns at 167 degrees Fahrenheit. In the summer, temperatures can reach up to 113 degrees Fahrenheit inside the factory. The melted lac is then formed into symmetrical circles known as button shellac, used for making bangles. Additionally, workers spread it onto a tool called a pipa to create sheet shellac, using a palm leaf to spread it evenly. Once cooled, they stretch it out further using their hands, feet, and even teeth. This age-old method has been used for centuries to produce shellac. How workers use their teeth to make sheets. After stretching the shellac into a neat 5x5 five five foot square, these sheets are ready for use. They're handy for polishing candies, cashew nuts, and fruit. Nowadays, machines do most of the stretching work, replacing the old-fashioned hand method. These machines work like pasta makers, pressing out thin sheets quickly. This makes the whole process four times faster than before. Workers give the sheet a quick tug and then tear it off. Afterward, they hang it up to cool and harden before chopping it into thin pieces resembling hair. These pieces will eventually stiffen into shards that are shipped around the world. Minoj can sell this refined shellac for almost double what he paid for. His biggest customers are from Indonesia and the United States, with the US being the largest importer of Indian shellac, buying up about a quarter of the total supply. Shellac has been treasured for 3,000 years because it's so versatile. How Shellac Became a Huge Industry The journey of shellac from ancient times to a booming industry is quite fascinating. Initially, it was used as a rich crimson dye and a strong glue made from insect excretions. Over time, people discovered its ability to create shiny, water-resistant finishes on wood and leather. Artists even mixed it into their paints. By the 1800s, shellac became the base for gramophone records and it remained a popular finish for wood paneling in American homes well into the 1900s. Its uses expanded further into pharmaceuticals where it coated pills and tablets and in food as a glossy glaze for candies, fruits, cakes, and nuts. Today, the global shellac industry is worth over $167 million with more than half of the world's supply coming from India. The US Food and Drug Administration approves shellac as a safe food additive as long as it's listed as shellac or confectioner glaze on the ingredients list. You can find shellac in treats like junior jelly beans, candy corn, and whoppers. It's also commonly dissolved in alcohol and sprayed onto citrus fruit creating a waxy coating that extends their shelf life. In villages like Tolens, thousands of people rely on shellac for their livelihoods, although the price can fluctuate dramatically. In 2022, Tolinda can make $12 per kilogram of shellac. The Future of Shellac The future of shellac is being shaped by a combination of technological advances, environmental concerns, and shifting consumer preferences. As the demand for sustainable and natural products continues to rise, shellac stands out as a versatile and eco-friendly option. Innovations in cultivation methods, such as controlled farming techniques and genetic engineering of lac insects, hold the potential to increase yield and reduce environmental impact. Additionally, research into alternative sources of shellac, such as plant-based resins or biotechnological approaches, could offer more sustainable alternatives to traditional insect-derived shellac. Furthermore, advancements in processing technology, including automation and efficiency improvements, may enhance the scalability and cost-effectiveness of shellac production. Beyond its traditional uses, such as in food, cosmetics, and pharmaceuticals, shellac may find new applications in emerging industries like bioplastics, renewable energy, and biomedical materials. However, challenges such as climate change, habit loss, and market fluctuations remain significant factors that will shape the future of the shellac industry. Collaborative efforts between stakeholders, including researchers, producers, policymakers, and consumers, will be essential to ensure the sustainable growth and innovation of the shellac industry in the years to come.